Hey, this is Matt Finch with Elevation Recovery. Thanks for joining me in this quick tutorial on the four classes of opioids. Basically, we have what are known as endogenous opioids, that being endorphin and enkephalin. These are opioid peptides that we create naturally in our own brain's neuropharmacy. The next class is called opium alkaloids. These are opioids that are things like morphine, thebane, and codeine. So these are opioids that literally come from the opium poppy plant, the Iranian opium poppy plant. And then class three of opioids are semi-synthetic opioids. These are things that come from the opium poppy plant, but they've been semi-synthesized in a laboratory. For example, both oxymorphone and buprenorphine, the main ingredient in Suboxone and Subutex, that's a semi-synthetic opioid as it's derived from thebane, a natural opium alkaloid. Then they did some work on it, uh, the scientists did in the laboratory. So that's semi-synthetic, part natural, part unnatural. And then finally, we get to class four of opioids. These are fully synthetic opioids. These are things like tramadol and methadone where they not only don't come from our brain, you know, they're not endogenous opioids, they're also not opium alkaloids, and they're not semi-synthetic, as they're not derived from the opium alkaloids, and they're not even semi-synthesized. These are opioids 100% created in a laboratory that have nothing to do with natural products in nature. And then, th there's not even really a class for this, uh, but then things like kratom, or a lot of people pronounce it kratom, in Thailand, it's pronounced kratom. That actually has, it's people are kind of confused on whether or not that's actually an opioid. Well, it doesn't fall into the any of the four traditional classes of opioids. It's definitely not an endogenous opioid that we create naturally. It doesn't come from the opium poppy plant. It's not a natural alkaloid from that plant. It's not a semi-synthetic opioid, and it's definitely not fully synthetic either. So this is kind of a novel agent Mitragynine and 7-hydroxymitragynine are two of the main alkaloids in the kratom plant that can bind to mu, delta, and kappa opioid receptors in the brain, uh, spinal cord, and also digestive system of our bodies. And so one thing that can be kind of confusing for a lot of people, and one thing that for me makes creating content on this YouTube channel and on my website, opiateaddictionsupport.com, not, not really hard per se, but complicated, uh, very, very kind of analytical, is all these different class, not just classes of opioids, but also delivery systems of opioids, and whether they're short-acting, uh, long-acting, sustained action, sustained onset and offset, or whether people are injecting them, taking a sublingual film, taking a pill, snorting them, smoking them, or putting a patch on even, there's a, or even a fentanyl lollipop. So there's, you know, I also help people with alcohol addiction, with benzodiazepine dependence, and those ones are a lot more straightforward, especially alcohol. Because alcohol is the same thing no matter what per a person is drinking. It's ethanol. And, of course, there's different strengths of it and different types, but it's all the same acting. In benzos, there's a little bit of differences, obviously. You know, Xanax is super short acting. And then clonopin or clonazepam, the generic, that's much more long acting. So those can be a little bit more kind of basic as, as far as creating content for that. But with opioids, the reason I'm doing a specific getting off Suboxone series and the reason I have other series coming up and then videos like this that pertain to anybody on any opioid or any types of opioids is because there's so many different you know, variables regarding uh, what type of opioid, what the duration of it is, what the route of administration is. So there can be varying detox protocols and more depending on those variables. So again, to review, we have four classes of opioids. One is our endogenous opioids, endorphin and enkephalin. That's what our brains create naturally through things like uh, physical exertion, exercise, when you eat really uh, high percentage dark chocolate, chili peppers, uh, and certain other things like falling in love. Those can all increase your endogenous opioids. There's also a supplement called DPA, that's short for D-phenylalanine, that can be purchased online. And that is a, I think, semi-synthetic supplement, or it might be fully synthetic, 
but it actually increases the amount of endorphins that you have available in your body. It's a pretty cool supplement that you can take to increase endorphin. DLPA is D is D-phenylalanine combined with L-phenylalanine, and that combination actually increases dopamine and endorphin and enkephalin. Then we have type 2 or the class 2 of opioids, opium alkaloids, things like morphine, codeine, and thebane. These are all natural alkaloids found in that natural state in the opium poppy plant, the Iranian poppy. Again, to, for review, class 3, semi-synthetic opioids, things like oxycodone, oxymorphone, buprenorphine, and several others. These are things that are part natural coming from the opium poppy plant alkaloids and part, you know, man-made chemicals in a laboratory. So it's kind of a hybrid of natural and unnatural. And then finally, class four, fully synthetic. So none of the, uh, the medicine or the drug or the substance, the compound, none of it at all comes from nature. It's 100% laboratory created. And then, you know, something that's more kind of new to the scene is opioids that don't even fall in these four classes. Like I mentioned, Kratom or Kratom or Kratom, that technically binds to opioid receptors, but it doesn't fall in any of those classes. Like I said, it's not endogenous, doesn't derive from the opium poppy plant, and it's not semi-synthetic or fully synthetic. It's fully natural, 100% natural, but it just doesn't come from the opium poppy plant. So now you might see in the future, they'll start, you know, these researchers and scientists and doctors might start doing a more expanded thing. Then we have opioids like tyaneptine or, or tianeptine. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, which a lot of people were getting addicted to. It's an atypical antidepressant that at really high dosages where you actually OD pretty much on the antidepressant effects. That is a way because it's got a, a small opioid agonist in it. But you have to take so much of this stuff, you OD literally on the antidepressant effects, but that was getting people this really uh, pleasurable euphoria inducing opioid high. And now it's like pretty much either unavailable online or almost unavailable. So there's a lot of different types of opioids. Then we got, you know, there's things like, I think W18, there's like opioid research chemicals you know, things like fentanyl and ones that you've probably never even heard of, bro, uh, bro, brofine, brofine. There's a lot of opioids out there and America and other, you know, developed countries from China and from Mexico, they are importing illegally and smuggling in lots of different stuff like fentanyl and carfentanyl and some of these newer, really powerful uh, fully synthetic opioids that are really inexpensive for them to make, huge profit margin, even if they're killing off a lot of their clientele because they're overdosing, thinking it's oxycodone, thinking they're oxycodone pills, when really it's just fentanyl or carfentanyl, so many of these other things. So that's all for today's training. Thanks so much for joining me. Give this video a like if you learned anything new. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And please leave a comment about something that you found interesting in this video. Take care and I'll see you next time.